the Kaufman Engine Starter, or Shotgun Starter. A shotgun shell was a surprisingly common way to start an engine in the 1930s and 40s. Special shotgun cartridges, using a common cordite explosive, were used to start tractors, tanks, and most commonly aircraft with radial engines, like the F4U Corsair. In the civilian world, the Field Marshal diesel tractor was commonly started by a shotgun shell. There are several different starter systems using shells, but they are all typically referred to as Kaufman engine starters. On aircraft, shotgun blast pressure pushed a special piston that drove a screw thread that engaged with the engine, turning it over. On a field marshal tractor, the shotgun blast pressure acted directly to drive the engine piston, sending it through its stroke, bursting the engine into life. Cartridges for tractors were also fired using a hammer. Aircraft used an electrical or mechanical system to fire a cartridge. Shotgun starters were surprisingly simple, and though seemingly crude, they offered some advantages for the expensive aircraft that used them. To operate, a cartridge is inserted into a breech, which is connected to the motor by a short steel pipe, similar to a gun barrel. The pilot fires the cartridge from the cockpit, and high-pressure gas shoots down the gun barrel, forcing the motor to spin and engage the starter ring gear on the engine, which is attached to the crankshaft. The shotgun starter is lightweight and compact. It doesn't require any special auxiliary equipment. Electric starters, for example, required heavy batteries to be carried on board and often needed external charging equipment. Electric starters often used external power sources as not to strain the onboard batteries. In fact, what are sometimes confused for fuel trolleys are often battery starter trolleys, which provide external power for electric starters. Inertia starters, such as those cranked by hand, also had disadvantages, such as weight, and they can take 10 to 20 seconds to start an engine. If the engine didn't start, the cranking process must begin again. It should also be noted that hand propping, that's starting the engine by spinning the propeller, was not done with larger World War II aircraft engines. When you see this being done, it's to move the cylinders on a radial engine to clear out any oil that may have run down from the engine parts above to the cylinders at the bottom. The main disadvantage to shotgun starting is that with each attempt to start the engine, a new cartridge must be used. Negating this disadvantage was that an air compressor starting system could be added to engines already equipped with shotgun starters, as they use the same principles for turning over the engine. Shotgun starters could also be added to most aircraft as an additional feature, used for quick takeoffs. Shotgun starters were most commonly found on American aircraft with radial engines, such as Pratt & Whitney Wasp engines, famously shown in both versions of the movie Flight of the Phoenix. Outside of American aircraft, British aircraft during World War II had variants equipped with shotgun starters, including the Supermarine Spitfire and Hawker Typhoon. Cartridge starters were used on a few jet engines, including the English Electric Canberra which used a high gas volume cartridge driving a turbine instead of a piston. Advancements to electric starters after World War II saw a steep decline in the use of shotgun starters. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching. I hope this shotgun starter video was engaging and you all have some new ideas on how to start your aircraft today. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.